What's up guys, it's Cooper Codes. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a React login with Google OAuth 2.0 in five minutes. We don't have much time, so let's get into it. If you have no Google projects, you're gonna be seeing something that looks like this. And so you're gonna to wanna to press create a project right here. Then you're gonna to wanna to name your project and then show your organization. You don't really need an organization, but just name it whatever you want. I named it Google Auth and press create. So now you should see something looks like this. Look up OAuth consent screen. It should be under APIs and services. This is that little screen that shows up when it says you wanna log into Google and then Google wants to access the Google Maps API, for example. Here, I would recommend using the external user type. This means you can do a test user with any Google account and it will start in testing mode. From here, you have to do a couple of things. Name your app, your user support email, and then your developer contact email. Once you have those three things filled out, you're good to go here. Save and continue. Now you want to add these scopes that you want your Google API to see. I'm just gonna add the simple, see your email address and see your personal info. Press update to see those scopes here and then press save and continue. These scopes will be unique to your app. So add the ones that your app needs. Now you want to add the users that you want to be able to log into your Google OAuth website. So this is any test account you want to use. I have an account called deskbasing at gmail.com I want to use. Only these test users are gonna be able to log in. Once you have all your tests, press save and continue. You don't care about the summary and you can press back to dashboard. Okay, so you should be at this type of screen. You want to press to the left here on credentials because we're going to create our OAuth client. So you have to press the plus create credentials here, go to OAuth client ID, select web application if that's what you're doing, and then you want to have the link to whatever your web application is being hosted on. For example, the default for React is localhost 3000. And so you wanna add that URI with HTTP in the authorized JavaScript origins and also the authorized redirect URLs, and then press create. When your client is created, you're gonna get a client ID and a client secret. Save these in a text file. Now we can get started with creating the React application by going to an empty folder, opening up your text editor, and then opening up a terminal and saying npx create dash react app, and then the name of the folder I'm gonna call client. All right, when that finishes, you want to cd into client, and then we are going to npm install a couple things. We're going to npm install gapi script, and then the react dash google dash login libraries. Okay, so now we have all the libraries we need. Let's go into our source folder and then go into the app.js, we can delete this entire header to clear our application out. We can now make a components folder. So let's make a folder under source called components. This is going to hold our login.js, our login button, and then our logout button. So logout.js. Let's start by creating the login button. I'm going to import Google login from that library we had from before. And then I'm also gonna make a const for our client ID. It's gonna be a functional component. So I'm gonna say function login. I'm gonna have it return to this. So copy this code here. What this is doing is it's creating a div around a Google login button here and it's going to have on success and on failure functions we have to create. We can create those by doing this. And so pretty much the basic idea of this is the Google login library handles everything for us. When it hits on success, it's going to call this function. And when it hits on failure, it's going to call this function. Now let's export this component by saying export default login. Now we can create our logout button. So we're going to import Google logout at the top here and create another functional component called logout. This component is going to return a Google logout button coming from the library again with an on success function that we have to create. All right, so this is the full component. Now we can export default logout. Let's start in our app.js by importing our logout and login buttons. We now need to import two more things, the Google API script, which gives us access to the Google API client so we can initialize that, and then the use effect hook from React. So you can import these like this. We also need access to our const client ID. We can import it like this. All right, so now we actually need to initialize our client. We can do this by using a use effect hook so it runs when our application runs. And we're gonna have a function start, which uses the gapi.client initialize. This takes in a client ID and then a scope. This scope is gonna be different if you're actually using other APIs. But this is the basic way of setting it up if you're not using any APIs that you need the scopes for. Then you're gonna load the client with auth2 and with the start function we created here. Now we can bring our login and logout buttons to our front end. Now you can go to your console and npm start to see your React application. So your React application should show the login and then the logout button. So let's try and log in an account. Remember, this has to be one of the test accounts you added earlier. So I'm gonna use a test account and boom, the login is successful. This means that our Google API script has access to the logged in user. Then if we attempt to log out, we should see a logout successful there. Now you have Google OAuth authentication working for your React application, congrats. One last note is if you're attempting to use APIs and they need an access token, this is how you can get the access token is through the Google API script. 
this is super important, this Google API script, and you can do things like get the access token of the current user signed in. So this is important if you're attempting to use an API and it needs an access token. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was informative and fast to get you set up for your React applications with Google OAuth. Make sure to subscribe for more content like this in the future.